Let's talk about tech stack. I get a lot of suggestions from software engineers who mentioned that I could save some money by switching to another tech stack or maybe a new UI components library that's trendy, but I never listen to them and I always stick to the exact same tech stack. And thanks to that, in the last two years, I was able to ship 21 products and those products are getting 260,000 page views per month and are making over 50,000 US dollars in revenue. And I'm working solo and I handle the customer support and there is barely any problem. And the tech stack only costs 67 US US dollar per month. All right, now let me show you exactly the tech that I use. All right, so for the front end part, I use React.js. It's a very popular JavaScript library. It has a bunch of extra library, like a drag and drop features, for instance, that I can plug and play right away. And some people say that it's quite complicated. I only know 10% of React. I just use use state and use effects. In 99% of the cases, it's way enough for all my apps. Then I pack all that into a Next.js application. It's very good for page routing and to have nice pages ranking on Google and it's also super easy to use. To style my apps, I use Tailwind CSS. I feel like it's much easier than CSS because the style is written directly on the right HTML tags. So it's easy for me to understand what's going on. And on top of that, I use a UI library called Daisy UI. It has a bunch of components like uh, buttons, form, cards that make things way faster to ship. There are a bunch of new design trends popping up every day, which means new UI components library is coming out. And to me, that's just distraction customers don't care if I'm using the latest gradient colors or whatever. So I stick to that UI library. It's clear, it's simple. They have 30 or 20 plus themes that I can customize. So whenever I ship a new app, I would pick a theme and find a cool typeface on Google phones and boom, I have an entirely designed cool looking apps that's up and running. All right, and for the backend part for my API, I would use Next.js serverless functions. Whenever I clone a Next.js project, I just add a file in the API folder and I have an entire API endpoint that's up and running. I don't need to install packages. I don't need to maintain an OS. It's just working so well for me and I never had any trouble with overcharge for serverless. So all good with that. For the database, I use MongoDB. I don't know why developers don't like MongoDB. I love it. It's so simple. I click a button, I open a new database and in minutes I can make queries and I can add anything I want to that database. It's just so simple and I absolutely love it. I set up a M0 cluster for each new project that I start, which is free. And just in case things go wrong, I do occasional backups, it costs me about $10 per month. And so if something goes wrong, I can still use a database backup and restore all the previous data. When I'm coding on my computer, I use a local version of MongoDB that lets me avoid making a network request to the production database when I'm coding. So I can code in a train, in a plane, remote somewhere in the countryside if there is no internet and the, the database is here and I can do everything I want. And I also don't mess up the production database just in case. On top of MongoDB, I add Mongoose, which simplifies the queries. They're more English friendly, I would say. All right, and all my apps use user logins to send things like magic links so that they can sign up with a secure token. I would use Melgun as an email provider for that. It's free to get started. It's super easy and you can set up a bunch of domains that you want for each of the apps. At the moment I'm recording the video, I spend three to four US dollar per month in order to send three to 4,000 emails, which I think is really cheap. And finally, I use Stripe in order to process payments, whether it's one-time payments, subscriptions, credits. It works for literally anything. Stripe API is a little bit daunting when you are getting started. There are a bunch of things going on. So I will link to an article that I wrote to help you handle Stripe subscriptions. All right, so for the hosting part where my websites are actually living, I use Versal for that. Uh, so I push my changes to a GitHub repo and then Versal automatically pulls the changes that I made and deploys it to Versal instance. And I have 21 projects running on Versal at the moment. It gets over 50,000 visitors a month and I still pay $20 a month. So overall, pretty good really happy with Versal and the simplicity it's bringing. And all my databases are hosted on MongoDB Atlas, where I have over 21 clusters and most of them are M0 cluster, which are free. To monitor data, to actually see what's going on in my apps, I use a few services. First is Plausible. It's a simple script analytics that lets me track how many visitors are on my site. And sometimes, occasionally, I will track events like did people click on that button or not. It's costing me $29 per month at the moment, which is surprisingly the most expensive part of my tech stack. If I receive a customer email support and something goes wrong, there is a bug that I don't know where it's coming from. I will check the virtual deployment logs. It's free to check the 
last 24 hours and it's usually when I catch the bug. And for advanced monitoring, things like split testing, I would do it manually with a database. I would store some kind of like integer in the database randomly and then just make the relevant query in the database see, I don't know, let's say like the last 100 signed up customers, filter them by their split test number and see which one purchased, which one didn't. I don't use any other services for that because I barely track any data. And if I need to, I would just use the raw MongoDB queries. And finally, some of my products need specific features. So for instance, I would use AI models for products like LogoFast, where I help people generate logos or for workbook PDF to help let help again. People will generate workbook to learn a new language. I use GPT-4 under the hood and I spend about $20 per month in OpenAI credit. If I need any other cloud services, I would go to Amazon Web Services. The two most common that I use are AWS S3, a big bucket where I can host images. This is what I use on Indie page where people upload pictures of their startups or their profile picture. This is where the image would go. And I also use from time to time AWS Think Cloud Front. It's a CDN, so image Images or videos load faster for things like a course, for instance. And a final touch, it is not really part of a tech stack, but I hire a junior software engineer called GitHub Copilot. It costs me $10 per month and it's helping me code way faster. I'll link to another video I made about how I turn on a startup ID into the first $1,000 in four days using GitHub Copilot. When I learned how to code, I remember struggling finding the perfect tech stack, but I wish I knew this. Tech stack don't matter. Customers don't care about about the visible, what matters is that you pick one tech stack and you stick to it. It's like a muscle. The more you practice one rep, the more comfortable you'll get with it and the faster you'll be able to do it. And the faster you ship, the faster you'll get customers. All right, that's the end of the video. As always, if you like the video, you can like the video. If you loved it, you can subscribe to the channel. Please also let me know in the comments if there are any topics you'd like me to cover. And until the next video, just ship it. Cheers. By the way, I got someone to help me edit those videos so I can spend more time building apps. Please let me know what you think about the editing.